After Aston Lark, Ralph and Sally met at the gas station, they all agreed to travel together to a common destination, a potentially untouched burrow. On approach, however, did they really see a corpse move? I guess you're about to find out. This is The Sprouting. One, the Meeting of Souls, Part 2. What do the four of you want to do? You said one of the corpses was twitching. Yeah. Yes. Lark is going to take steps back, trying to get behind the, the tall dudes. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you notice that Asta kind of immediately takes a step as he notices that you're, you're coming back towards him. Like, yeah, he kind of instinctively, like, pulls out his gun and, like, takes half a step in front of you just to, like, begin to, like, shield you from whatever ahead because he notices that you're backing up. Like, mm-mm, okay, all right, well, <laughs> I guess I'll step in. From where Sully is standing, uh, can he, like, do they just look like corpses or do they look like something? Um, are you guys getting any closer? You said it was already moving? Yeah, you, you saw like a foot twitch, like a couple of times. But it's just twitching. Yeah, just, just a twitch. like Okay, okay. Sporadic movement. Sorry, you ended the episode on, and then a foot twitch. Uh, that, yeah, that's a, that's a related rigor mortis. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was assuming next episode was going to be zombies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Plants versus zombies, start one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if the foot's only twitching and there's no actual real movement or shuffling going on, then I think uh, Sully with a raised shotgun is going to like move to get a better angle at the bodies. But yep. uh, Sully is not a dumb man. He looks around before he starts moving, making sure he doesn't step on or into something that would kill him. Sure. Take a spot in. All right. Yeah, any of you are welcome to do these checks. Um, since there's only three of you as main, you're all welcome to take any checks. Uh, if we end up having an expanded party, then it will only be one. All right. Uh, Can I write I the, the success from last episode? Sorry, Aether. No problem. Uh, absolutely not, okay. I'm afraid, Luck. <laughs> uh, so I got a 28 and a 50, so that's a, uh, so that's a success. I just succeeded in a skill check. Do I mark it yes. as um, progressible or whatever it's called? Yes. So if you ever get any successes, you are supposed to be marking them for improvement, which we would do during the improvement phase. All right. So, um, Sully, with your uh, spot-hidden success, um, you begin to make your way up towards where the gates are, and you begin to spot that there are kind of six people that are laying hidden amongst all the stuff. The pathway is quite clear, and you focus in on the body that seems to have twitched, um, and there is definitely something different about them compared to the rest the rest are clearly very obviously dead they've been torn to pieces you can see that like one of them is missing a leg you can see that some of them have weapons that they are holding on to but obviously was not successful Um, the body that you end up seeing that has uh, begun to twitch as you kind of get to the very like the gate itself um, you notice that it is this a uh, younger woman. She has very shortly cropped blonde hair. Um, you can see that there's like blood splatters all over her body. She's wearing like very tight fitting clothes, um, and she has what's like a very big machete like in one of her hands. And it looks like you know she has been like torn to shreds across her chest, across her stomach, across her legs. But yeah, she looks a mess. Um, for Lark, who managed to get an extreme success on their spot hidden, you notice that this person is definitely breathing. You can just see the rise in the floor of the chest, even though it's quite shallow. Um, you notice that. You also notice that the other bodies here are definitely not moving. There doesn't seem to be any signs of life about them at all. And you can see that the two large iron doors that are kind of in that kind of like tunnel within the mountainside, you can see that they're slightly adjacent 
ajar and you can you think you see objects moving in the darkness beyond but it's like maybe a person maybe a creature even though you had a um, an extreme success the fact that you can see there's anything moving in there at all being it's quite a distance off you know that there is something going on in there yeah. L- lark is going to pull out uh, their hand sickle <laughs> from their backpack <laughs> and uh, just for clarification was the um, the woman who was still breathing was that the same person that was also where the foot was twitching yes Yes, it's the one that like she is the you owner kind of pointed of the out. <laughs> yes, she is the owner of Twitchy Foot. Um, Ralph, is there anything that you're doing? I want to figure out what killed them, basically, or if I've seen anything like this before, because this seems very extreme. I guess the first obvious question is, this is clearly an animal attack. Like, these are not machete slices or gunshot wounds. These are quite clearly creature attack. You cannot tell whether it's a biological animal or a biological plant or a mixture of the two. Was it fauna or flora? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I'd say... Ralph, it's either going to be a natural world or it'll be um, a medicine check or a mythos check. Library news. I'm sorry, <laughs> mythos check? Yeah, so we have uh, Yamal mythos, which is our equivalent of um, Eldritch knowledge. Ah, okay, yes. You said library use, Yamal no. No. mythos. It's mythos, natural medicine. World. Or natural world. medicine and natural world. This is going to sound really stupid, but it's the higher of the three. Oh yeah, yeah. You want a high skill, a skill with a higher. Point. Yeah, I know. But I, I do I need went to know it. what you're rolling. Um, it, it's a fifty-nine versus fifteen, so it's a failure. Yeah, but what's uh, the mythos roll? roll? Okay. Um. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing is coming to mind at all. Yeah. Um, like. You probably could guess that it is some sort of plant attack. Um, these don't look massively like bears, which aren't massively common in the area, which would be your like, oh, it's a bear attack. We don't have bears here. Uh, Polar <laughs> so bears. Kind of like, mm. In the Alps. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like, you don't think this area is renowned for its bears, so this is probably some sort of plant attack, but anything beyond that. You've got nothing, buddy. The the body's still breathing. She's alive. <coughs> oh. <clears throat> uh, Sully like starts moving closer to the the lady. He's scanning around with his gun, and looks back at the party. And just from a quick glance, does any of them look like they might be like in any way medicine trained? Like. Like anything that would hint that they would be any like good, I'm okay at first aid, which is what we need right now. But I'm basically asking the group, like, does anybody want to take a step forward and go? I'll do the first aid or medicine. I just uh, I'm okay. You at Mel it. Mythos instead of rolling medicine. So <laughs> if that tells you, <laughs> Lark, Lark is going close to that person that that looks uh, a vile, whatever the fuck happened there. <laughs> looks vile. Um, yeah. the floor is you covered could in probably... blood. You could probably guess, um, I- I'm going to say like, because you, you managed to get like a bit of a glance at Asta's stuff and Asta like before mm-hmm. you, you interacted with him properly, um, you would recognize what looks like healer's herbs here and there. Um, like you recognize like they're not good, but obviously material that has been like broken down into what could be used as bandages. Um, like maybe he has some sort of really good first aid, but maybe he's more inclined in different manners. Like I just, it's hard to tell. Yeah, I think uh, Sully's going to make an, uh, oh, what's it called? A negative assumption and assume it's some kind of ma- uh, magical hum- mumbo jumbo. <laughs> uh, and okay. Yeah. Uh, so Reverse he's... deduction. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he looks over at the crew and just like, all right, uh, s- cover me, please. And he's going to throw his shotgun to the ground to his side, takes off his backpack, and he goes into, like, one of the easier access... No, yeah, he throws off his backpack and just goes into a pocket and grabs out some bandages. And he's going to start tending to the lady. Didn't you say that 
She looked like she was ripped apart or something. She had a massive... Yeah, it looks like she has like really deep like cuts and gashes okay. in her that are not clean in any way, shape or form. Okay. I, I guess like uh, as soon as Lark sees that um, uh, Sully is like attempting to f- assist the person, like Lark puts the hand sickle back in the in the um, in the slot where it goes and uh, approaches from behind and like looks over his shoulder. Um, Asta would definitely come with, um, and Asta is kind of like aiming and pointing the gun and just doing a really good like visual check of the area to make sure that you two are safe um yeah i, I think that's that's probably what astra is up to um yeah as you approach the girl like you can see her eyes are beginning to like she is like focusing you can see that there's like tears are streaming down her face um and she occasionally just like coughs and like she's trying to speak um you can see that she's trying to move but that's just making everything so much worse uh, I think Sully uh, gets out probably some kind of pocket knife and cuts away the cloth that's like covering up the wounds and he starts mm-hmm. assessing the damage and doing his best to stop the bleeding. Uh, and I'm pretty sure he would also say something along the lines of like, stop trying to talk, focus on your breathing, focus on your breathing, that's all you need to do right now. Take a first aid check for me. Don't fuck me, don't fuck me, don't fuck me. Can this be assisted? Does, is that yep, uh, if you assist, um, then that gives him a bonus die, which in this system basically lets you re-roll um, or lets you roll the tens dice twice and you take the higher result. Yeah, all right. Uh, lower result. Better results. Yeah. All right, uh, I rolled an 82, so I really I do appreciate it. Uh, what does help look like from Lark? I'm genuinely just curious. Um, uh, I think, like... Um, Luck doesn't have like a lot of first aid training, but they will try to uh, help you. Like um, probably like t- um, while you are focusing on the wound, focus on like her her face. Like make sure that the airway is, uh, is open and ah. everything and stuff like that. Yeah, and um, maybe try to position her kind of like. I don't know what the, the position is called. The one that's like where, where you on the side that you can breathe better. Recovery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one. Yeah. All right, love it. All right, rolling that extra dice. That's a zero. So I rolled a... So I I rolled a 82 and a two. Damn. So, uh, two is an extreme success. So yes. you can mark that as a to improve. Mm-hmm. Um, on an extreme success with the help of Lark, who kind of like helps tip the head back a little bit, make sure that the kind of whatever blood is in the chest is uh, in the in the throat has been like taken out. And like, yeah, you begin to like wrap some of these things. You remember that, oh crap, I actually have some sort of disinfectant. And, and you kind of like begin to take care and wrap and bind some of these wounds up. Um, between the two of you, you roll her onto her side and she doesn't seem to be letting go of her machete at all. It's like her knuckles are like bone white um, clasped on it. Um, and she's still like breathing it exceptionally ragged but she is doing much better um i won't have you roll a d4 for healing at this point because the health is kind of irrelevant um so yeah she just begins to take some very like ragged breaths and she says siluna she's alone where is she you see uh, the woman like lifts her head and she kind of like nods in the direction of the um, complex inside the mountain. What attacked you? <laughs> there, there were things that came out of events. <laughs> we had been here a little while and we thought we were safe. But they... It came out the vents and it started attacking us. Some of us ran out, but it came after us. And then it went back in after Saluna. You, you have to help her. Okay. We're gonna help her, we're gonna help her. I just have to ask you a question, a couple more questions. Uh, so let's kind of look around. Does it look like the people were moved or dragged here, or does it look like this is where they made their stand? Uh, spot hidden? All right. All I can think when you're like, but wait. But wait, there's more. We've been trying to contact <laughs> you about your car's extended <laughs> 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 Wow. 
well, well, well. An- another extreme success. I'm that just waiting to have off, a nice. success. <laughs> to be, I, don't, I, haven't had one. I haven't had one yet. I don't know what it's like. It must be nice. <laughs> just start shooting your gun at things. Eventually you'll get a success. <laughs> um, it looks like some of them tried uh, a last stand. Like you can see that the way that some of them have been like thrown backwards, they have like guns pointed roughly in the direction. You can see that there are clearly like spent uh, cases all around. You can see that there's impacts on the wall and on the door and on the floor from weapon shots that were fired at that kind of like entrance way. Um, so yes, yeah, some of them at least tried to make a last stand here. Uh, okay, but nobody was dragged or moved around. Like this creature was not trying to hide them. Not as far as you can tell, no. Okay. Um, like maybe some of them were kind of like, no, yeah, no, okay. no there would be none of them dragged at all. Uh, basically just establishing if the creature is uh, smart uh, because that changes how you have to deal with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you said there was like a little guard outpost kind of thing. Yeah, it's just like big enough for a person to sit or stand in. Yeah. Uh, Solly's going to point to that thing and say, uh, we should mo- probably move her over there away from the grass and the plants. It will give her a better place to uh, recover. Uh, the intention just to give her a place to like kind of sit so that she can defend herself if something comes. Um, yeah, this... like you can absolutely like move her. I mean, she's either going to croak right now or she's not. Like you moving her is going to have absolutely no difference on this. Um, but yeah, like you're able to like lift and carry her and get her over to um, the hut. There's no way that she's walking. Um, and yeah, you can like not like she's not going to lay down in there like the sitting is more like a really big slouch yeah. where like half of her is propped up and she has like you know she has like a machete in her hand so it's not going to be a good defense but maybe something it's it's also just like getting her away from plants because i'm imagining yeah. there's a lot of hyperactive plants that will just attack like unconscious humans they smell blood and they're coming for you yeah they're like, drinking uh, right now yeah uh I, I don't know if this is anything we will establish later, but like I'm definitely imagining like, yeah, if a human is just like killed, they will be devoured by plants by the end of the day. Like I always imagine they will just wrapped up like instantly. But again, <laughs> this is just in my head. I'll write a short uh, story. Wandering around the world in paranoia is a smart idea. Um, yeah, you'll be able to get her settled down. Did you mention how long ago this was? I think not, right? You can ask her. Mm-mm. You can ask her. When was this? When when did this happen? <sighs> Maybe 15, 20 minutes. All right. Uh oh. What do you mean, uh oh? <laughs> <laughs> that was out of character. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Just like, like, oh, wait, 15, 20 minutes ago? That's when I turned into a werewolf and attacked all those people. <laughs> <laughs> wait Whoopsies. a minute. <laughs> um,. Yeah, uh, Sully looks back over the group and uh, he kind of like, uh, without, he's asking, but with like a kind of a commanding tone. You guys can definitely tell that Sully has, like when we were talking at the gas station, he had a li- little bit of a like a chip on his shoulder, kind of like, uh, like he, he was trying to be friendly, but he definitely like didn't come off like super friendly, especially after the gunshots and all that stuff but he's definitely like kind of changed gears now like he's definitely in a different gear and he kind of asks but is kind of se- semi-commanding he's just like all right uh so does somebody want to stay here with her or are we all intending to go in together the, the the door was slightly open and it looked like there were things moving i think i don't i don't think i want to go in there i, I think i would stay here I understand. I understand. I don't want to put you in any danger. Are you handy with that? Uh, he looks at your blade. Sickle. Uh, uh, well, I survived until now. Like, you can see Sully's, like, digesting that answer. Just like, do you mean alone? <laughs> <Okay>. uh, <laughs> I mean, we're all alive, and I think most of us are older than you, so I don't know what you're... <laughs> no, are you but... trying to dab on us? <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, like, uh, he's definitely like digesting the sentence, and they're like, all right, uh, 
Oh, damn it. What was his name? A- A- Asta. Asta. All right, Ralph. Asta. Uh, do you want to cover the rear, or are you coming in? I, uh... I'll be right behind you, eh? Fantastic. Um, Sully's gonna <laughs> take off his backpack, and he's gonna put it in the, like, little room that the lady's in. I'm assuming I'm assuming there's space for it. If not, he just... I don't think so. Okay, 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 um, it really is only big enough for someone to stand or maybe sit in and like her legs are poking at the end. If you put the bag in there, it's yeah. going to take up like yeah. half the room. He basically takes off his backpack and leans it against the, the shed. And... Oh, is it like a night guard thingy? Little hut? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, he leans it against the shed and night guard thingy. Uh, and he looks over at Lark. Please keep that very, very safe. But I do not want this on my back if something's attacking us. Um, he yeah, has Lark a, nods, yeah. He has a lot of stuff in his pockets and he makes, like, he does, like, a pat down, just making sure, like, yeah, I've got extra shells. <laughs> I take the rifle with me in case that becomes important. It's like doing, like, a little bit of inventory before he starts heading out. Um, you see Asta, like, he looks at what you've done and just kind of like shrugs and rolls his eyes. Like he has a feeling. He takes like the side bag he has off and he, he puts it uh, next to yours. Um, and he says to Lark, Lark, if anything happens to me, there's a place not far from here. It's called Diablera. It's one of them collective places. I've got a friend there. Can you make sure it gets there? Uh, did he say a name to who to give it to in Diablera? Uh, Diablera. Yeah, uh, his name's Henry. He came from the same place that I came from. Yeah. Uh, just taking notes, because uh, I'm imagining Sully has a much better uh, n- uh, memory than I thought. <laughs> All right, uh, Sully, with his shotgun ready, starts moving forward. Uh, Do you not need to leave anything, Ralph? Uh, no. I'm going to put my VR headset down and begin recording. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's oh, coming. very gonna, smart um, it's coming with me very smart this video is going straight to live uh, live music <laughs> bitbox bitbox <laughs> immediately it's the only thing that's still streaming is bitbox um, yeah absolutely um, the three of you make your way forward um, I'm assuming Sully you're in the lead Unfortunately, yes. I'm more beside you than <laughs> yeah. behind you. <laughs> I'm hoping okay, I have Asta, some... Asta will take the rear then. Asta will take the rear. I, I'm, um, hoping, I'm hoping you have some VR night vision bullshit in your goggles. Yeah, it, it's... It, 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 so, yes, kind of, but not <laughs> an extreme amount like you're thinking. Okay. Like, it's yeah, not okay, like okay. military just, just night bit, vision. Yeah. This is like, you know how VR headsets can see infrared light? It's just basically a flashlight that no one else can see except the goggles. It's the distance okay. of a short range flashlight. I don't have insane <laughs> night vision, um, but <laughs> gotcha. to a minor degree, yes, he, he uses his headset for night vision stuff. Hmm. Um, yeah. So the pair of you make your way up to the doors. Um, Astra is behind you with a rifle, uh, which he obviously has aimed a little bit high. Um, he's a, he's quite tall himself, but like he still needs to aim over your heads. Um, and he's he's definitely ready. Um, as you get to the doors, I'd like you to either make a listen check or a spot hidden check. Um, Ralph, you may do the spot hidden with advantage because you do. Ha- sorry, with a bonus die because you do have that little little extra something in your VRs. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, 10 baby. Now you can 50. mark it off too. Yay. 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 Extreme success. That's your first success. Woo, Yay. baby. Yay. <laughs> I did it. Yep, don't forget to mark off your spot hidden. Um, so, Sully, you got a what uh, kind of success? I got a hard success. Mm-hmm. And Ralph got an extreme. As you look into the darkness, you can see what looks like a very long corridor that like begins to dip down. You can see that there are pipes and electrical conduits that seem to be running the length of this. You can see that off to the right-hand side, there seems to be this room, which was not evident at all from where you were originally standing, but now you're here. You can look right, and as you're looking around, you can see that there is just what looks like blood is smeared along the walls and along the ground. You can see lots of footprints in the blood as people have obviously been running through. Um, On the right-hand side in that room that you saw, you see this 
kind of older looking lady. She has um, like lots and lots of grey hair that's tied back into um, into a braid that's kind of like tucked into her shirt and you can see it because of your extreme and really good successes. Um, she's wearing what looks like a very tight shirt um, and you can see that she is like holding two machetes like one very defensively and one kind of in front of her you can see that she obviously has a stance as somebody who knows what the fuck she's doing you can tell that she's obviously spotted and heard you come in because her hearing isn't trash um she heard the sounds behind her she kind of tips her head a little bit but begins to focus again on the vent that's right in front of her and then as you kind of take a few steps in look down the corridor and see literally nothing there and you look into this room that has a table and a couple of chairs and what looks like a couple of lockers with like clothes hanging there you see movement in that vent the vent cover itself has fallen off long since and you can see that there is this creature that is long and tendril like it's very pale um you can see that it has this like big flower on it um that is kind of this dark pinkish kind of color um and you can see that it has like glowing blue veins all across it you can see that it kind of like begins to slowly make its way out and you see the woman kind of jump up and slash forward with her machete you can see that it kind of as she jumps up and slashes forward it kind of like knocks against the side of the venting and you can see the vent kind of dent a little bit but she kind of drops down and lands perfectly well on her feet um and she kind of like you see the plant kind of like fall back a little bit but then begin to like again like creep its way forward what do you want to do um if I... Sully has a much better experience with shotguns than Aether does. <laughs> uh, do I feel like it would be safe to shoot one of my... Uh, um, we had a conversation about this. I don't know how much you remember about it. His improvised shotgun shells? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would he feel safe shooting that above her head through the vent? Like... Uh, you would probably want to ask her to duck and get much closer. Yeah. All right. Uh, then, like... Sully, uh, okay, uh, let's then first just say Sully looks to what the other two are doing. Um, uh, Aster is behind you. He probably yeah. hasn't even seen what you're doing. I don't have any game saving ideas at the moment, so <laughs> still assessing right, then, the situation. All right, just just wanted to make sure I wasn't. Uh, yeah, no, go ahead. He moves like shockingly quickly and surely, like the gun trained at the vent. He starts moving forward and he just uh, quickly says, just Miss Duck, as he like uh, starts moving into the room. Uh, she kind of crouches down and rolls to the side and still ends up in like a fighter stance. Yeah, he like as soon as she's like, he feels like she's out of the way, he's just gonna blast a single uh, shotgun shell at the vent and okay. r- rack another one as soon as he's done. Okay, yep, go ahead and make your attack roll. All right, that would be a firearms, a rifle, or a shotgun. And that is an extreme success. Jesus. <laughs> all right, all right, who did you pay? <laughs> um, so Why are you getting all these successes? Who did you pay? <laughs> so I, I happen to know the guys who made uh, Crush Portal. <laughs> Insert uh, uh, ad spot here. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> save it for the end. Save it for the end. <laughs> no, no. I, I rolled a 15 on a 75, so that's an extreme success. Okay, yeah. Uh, absolutely, you blap the shit out of it. Um, it kind of, like, as you kind of, like, lift and aim and get it, like, kind of as it was, like, really the whole petal face, uh, sorry, the whole face of the flower um, was kind of, like, beginning to make its way out of the vent, you kind of put your shotgun up, one good shot, poof, you see, like, the whole thing just, like, shatter into pieces as, like, these small pieces of um, uh, shell, or sorry, of um, your your shots just going to kind of spray out, and you see it kind of, like, being pushed back. You see that there's a lot of, like, dinks and tinks as it kind of bounces off the metal of the um, vent, and you hear this kind of, like... <sighs> And you see this kind of dark yellow pollen that begins to just like eep out, sorry, like begin to like seep out of the the flower that you have just destroyed. Uh, the woman grabs you by the shoulder and runs out of the room and throws close the door. Oh, she's pulling me out? Yep. Okay. Yeah. But not the other two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming she's just like, get the fuck out of here. Um <laughs> Yeah, she kind of like closes the door behind her and like she kind of like leans forward, like her hands on her knees, like just kind of like trying to breathe. Um, both machetes still clutched in her hands. Oh, fuck. 
Uh, thanks. I'm assuming you're Saluna. Guilty as charged. Pleasure to meet you all. Uh, unfortunate circumstances. Do you believe there yeah. are anybody else inside the burrow? Uh, she shakes her head and she says, no. Then uh, this, Sully this is already retreating out of the door when she says no. No reason to stay here any longer. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm getting away from this plant thing. Do you know how much shit is in here? There's so much stuff we need to rescue. We can't just leave it. Yes, but your friend is outside. You might want to give them a pep talk. They are very hurt. Shit. All right. All right. Um, And she kind of like follows you guys outside. Yeah. Uh, once we're outside, like, Sully, like, re-racks the shotgun. He's, like, already in, uh, <laughs> like, for setup mode as they start walking towards the, uh, the shed. Yeah, um, you see that she kind of, like, um... I'm gonna stay behind. Puts, like, a hand over her mouth as she sees, like, the carnage like, in, like, full daylight out here. Um, you can see that she just, like, is taking it in, but she sees her, her friend who's in the guardhouse and she just kind of, like, bolts her way across, um, moving at surprising speed for one, uh, who's, who's quite old. Um, and she kind of, like, drops to one knee next to the girl and they begin to, like, speak very quietly. Um, and as soon as the girl tries to speak, she just kind of, like, the older woman, like, shakes her head, like, no, no. It's okay. You did the one thing you needed to do. You survived. It's okay. Just breathe. And she kind of like, she kind of like uh, takes off like whatever jacket she's wearing. She lays it over the girl. Um, and you can see that her hair is like definitely quite long and quite thick. Um, and she kind of like turns to look at you all and she looks at uh, Lark and she's like, Thank you for taking care of my friend. Lark just nods and uh, then leaves them be. <laughs> <laughs> just steps out of out of the way. <laughs> like, not part of this. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. Um. <laughs> you were trying to say something new? Uh, um, I was saying that I, I stay behind in the vault. Oh. In okay. the burrow. Then Asta will stay with you. Um, he doesn't think you guys splitting up is a smart idea. All right. Uh, once she has had her, uh, like, a little, like, reunion with a, a girl, Sully, like, all right, uh, you say there's a lot of things to rescue from this place. Of course. That's why we're here. How long have you guys been here before we arrived? And Sully says this as they start moving back to the group. Assuming the rest of the group can hear it. Yeah, yeah. I won't make you roll a listen check for this. Everyone can hear. Um. <laughs> My intention is not to interrogate her without Ralph there. That is what I'm trying to hit at. Yeah, um, she says, yeah, we've been here three or four weeks now, I think. Which kind of does tie up with what Ralph, with what you know. Yeah. Like. Would you have, did you guys see any um, seat storages while you were looking around? Yeah, there, there wasn't much. Um, a few basics, a couple of different types of potatoes, carrots, um, sort of root vegetables, really. Did it look like somebody had taken, or was it just a small storage? She shakes her head and she says, When we got here, it's <sighs> Well, kind of accidentally busted the lock getting in, but it's perfect. No one had set foot in here for however long this place has been. <sighs> uh, Sully is definitely thinking to himself, like, and then in three weeks, something's already in there. You guys fucked up. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, he does not say that out loud. Uh, yeah, uh, once the group is together again, um, Sully, like, gets in front again, I guess. Fucking shotguns there. They are the preacher weapon. <laughs> um, Asta says, One of your scouts found me. I was working at a local farm. They said you had magics here. And she nods and she says, Yeah. Um, this place, it's been on our radar for a little while. 
someone had a feeling, an inclination. Some of us have blessings and like an ancestral memory is how they described it. They knew this place was here. Um, and we looked around and, yeah, this place used to belong to a, a group. Um, they were called Vale Lake and they were preparing for the sprouting. Apparently they knew it was coming. There's seeds in here, there's magical tomes and books, there's relics that can hold back some of the plants and we were studying it and then everything went wrong but maybe that's a story for another day we can just get in there's some very specific things in here that we need and once we have them we can abandon this place to the plants do you have any idea what that thing in the vent is uh would sully have recognized it in any way uh, you can take a history check or you can take a natural world check. And Ralph, you can do the same. <laughs> uh, I got Seriously, a, dude. I got an eight. That's a hard success. 91 versus 30. <laughs> I swear Fail. Aethel is rigged. Aethel, seriously. they It's just what it is. Quest puzzle saw, oh, that person is Icelandic. And they were just like, yeah, just bump his numbers up. Fuck him. Bump. Fuck everyone else. <laughs> Let's give that guy a bump. <laughs> Time to set my VPN to Iceland. Hang on. the Iceland's knav. Hanna gold, yeah. I'm like, fuck you guys. Um, we love you. Um, unfortunately, Ralph, this is nothing that you've ever come across or anything that you've really heard of. Um, yeah. And Sully, yeah, um, this is a, uh, a pollen cloud devourer. It's known to hide in um, like small confined spaces like pipes or vents. Um, you know that uh, usually they're kind of like pink or blue. Um, they'll either have pink um, petals with like blue veins that glow or they'll have blue petals with pink veins that glow. Um, but either way, you know often when they are destroyed or when they have like a perfect face on view at somebody's face, they will just... Poof, um, and spray them down with pollen, which will eventually just give the person breathing problems and end up killing them and slowing them down. Um, so, yeah, it's a pretty bad plant to to tangle with. Go All into right. the person's air vents. Uh, so in the air vents to get into your air vents, baby. <laughs> vent to vent action. Um, <laughs> would Sully know if there is any known medicine to help deal with the uh, pollen if you get hit? Um, yeah, but it's something you would have to take within a day or so. Um, and you'd usually, you would probably find them at collectives. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just, yeah, like kind of like this, uh, like kind of this like white powder, um, that you just put a little bit of a water in and then like drink it back and try mm -hmm. not to spit it out. Um, it's quite bitter. Um, yeah, you've seen people take it. Yeah. They usually end up still having breathing problems throughout their life that come and go. But if okay. you can get it within a day, they usually be okay. Okay. Um, um, just would like to know how fucked I am when I get hit with the, the pollen <laughs> attack. Yeah, let's give my um, character asthma in the first episode, first session. Um, <laughs> COVID. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's magical pollen plants. It's not. God damn it. Um, um on your uh, extreme success, um, it was Sorry, on your hard success, um, you would know that the wounds sustained by the people on the outside don't match, match. with no. the MO of this plant. <laughs> I know, I know. I Like like when you were describing the magic creature, I'm like, it does not sound like something that would chase them out of the <laughs> place. <laughs> and rip open the doors, um, uh, the bar doors, whatever yeah. the fuck that was. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Yeah, as we start like advancing into the um, uh, burrow, uh, Sully's just gonna real quick ask like, um, Saluna, th the things in the vents, it doesn't really chase people outside. Do you know what it was that got outside? Uh, she shakes her head and she says, nope, I, I managed to take down most of these vent creatures. I saw lots of people running outside and heard gunshots, but I was a little too busy 
not being killed by that other thing. <sighs> all right. And Lark is all by myself. Don't worry, you've got a oh, guardian with a machete. I had plans for people who decided to leave themselves outside, Kessir. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, then I think we're just advancing inside unless uh, Ralph wants to send his drone ahead. Where? <laughs> to outside? No, to inside. To inside? I am inside. I didn't leave the inside. So the other thing that's left inside is that there was a long corridor that kind of dipped down, but you can see the end of it. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. And that's where she's trying to go because the vault wouldn't just be like one small room. Um, sorry, the dwelling wouldn't be one small It's like... Definitely something further in. It's just one um, big, what's it, what do they call it? Antechamber or something like that? That's the entrance. <laughs> it's just one <laughs> There's big... only the antechamber. Yeah. Um, um, I'm going to hold on to my batteries. I'm not going to no send the vault out just now. Um, Smart. What would you choose, eh? If you could choose to preserve anything in here, what would you prioritize? There's a book. It's called. It was written by a woman in the early 1800s. Um, came from a place called Lien. Her name was Seraphine. She... She seemed to know about all the weird stuff that was coming before it happened. Yeah, it happened 80 years ago, but she was alive more than 200 years ago. 300 years ago, almost. Blimey. She has magical knowledge that's spread the globe if there's anything in here anything at all that could maybe save our world maybe even get it slightly back so that we don't have to fear for the life of our kids yeah it's that book I want to see alright let's find it then I guess Asta nods as he's like following you all in and he says that's good that's the sort of thing I hoped you would have, like your scout said. And as you're walking down this corridor, um, as you kind of make that steep uh, descension down, uh, you see that there is a door ahead of you and it's open and it leads to kind of like this big empty kind of chamber ahead of you. Um, it seems to have like a series of doors right in front of you, these massive like metal doors that look like very difficult to open. You can see buttons everywhere. Strangely enough, the lights are all still on. You can tell that there's still power going on. And the further in and the further down you go, it seems to be getting like much, much, much colder. Um, there's like a giant door ahead of you. There's a giant door off to your left hand side and another one off to the right um you can see that the one to the left is open um but the other two aren't i'm gonna hold you guys here all right lark what are you doing outside i think lark is mostly like um definitely like uh the first thing they did was like look around the the, the little hut they uh, like for for spots where they can hide that isn't necessarily a bush <laughs> And um, um, so, like, yeah, the hut is like so small. It literally yeah. is. You could stand in it or sit in it. Like, there is no, no, around that the girl around is in the, it on the on the on the premise. Uh, like basically, just get a yeah. mental image of what the what the place looks like in case they need to eat. Yeah, so you kind of have like the the chain link fence, um, which kind of goes around, and part some of it like it's broken, like off to one side. Like, yeah, it's a bit of a run, but you could definitely get through it. But there's forest over there. Um, you can see that the gate, which has been like kind of torn open, um, that's definitely an exit, and it's right next to that little hut where the woman is currently sitting, slash slouching, slash laying, slash probably still dying. Um, so there's that. Um, you can see there's a few cars around that are clearly quite rusted, but you could definitely hide behind some of those. Um, there's lots of pieces of broken concrete. Some of them are up at like a really big angle, and you probably couldn't 100% hide behind it, but you could probably buy yourself enough time by like scooting to it and then just, uh, like jutting off to somewhere else. Yeah, so so they are definitely like keeping a mental image of everything that is there and like making sure that in case they need to get into the vault really quick to warn the others, they have a pathway open and uh, that they they always try to stay like quote unquote hidden in behind something a shadow like just make sure they're not in plain view, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, you notice. That coming through the gate is what looks like a vine of Zelata's grace. 
its blue kind of vine is like quite thin and then rapidly gets thicker and thicker until it's about the thickness of a human arm. It's probably probably much bigger than you've seen one actually. The, um, um, just the, the gate is that the the entrance to the premise or the gate that the the, the guys went into the burrow? Um, so into into the um, into the premise itself okay. um, because the the entrance to the mountain complex are just definitely doors. They're like solid doors. Um, yeah, like you see the. Um, the vine just kind of making its way through. You can see that there are the leaves get thicker and thicker, and you can suddenly see that there is what well, looks like a really big flower on top of it, and it seems to be snaking its way through the gate, and then abruptly turns and starts heading towards you. Oh, they're they're definitely trying to like back away in like in a way that they can get out of the way from of the thing, like. Uh, bah- either behind the, the, the little hut or like um, if they can find something like a what what is it called water pipe like no drainage pipe climb yep. up a little bit climb on like <laughs> <laughs> um, you could definitely roll a climb check to get on top of this um, like tiny hut. little like security hut thingy yeah. um, like to get yourself off the ground um, yeah. but yeah like that's probably the best you get if you're going to try and get height yeah, that's okay. your best best option I'm, I'm going to try yeah. that go ahead and roll a climb for me it's fairly easy 64 wait hang on nope I failed <laughs> you can use luck if you want to um, or you can just experience what's about to happen <laughs> uh, it is a lot of luck though no I you think you can push uh, yourself <laughs> <laughs> so um, I don't think like uh, the, the luck has probably seen the purple ones before but I don't think they've ever like seen what they do so they're, they're yeah, definitely like going to take out the, the the sickle and that's like be prepared <laughs> yeah second. like you've you've definitely come across the lance's grace before um yeah. it's never been aggressive Hostile. um towards like anyone that you have ever seen or ever yeah. heard of um and you know that it often does move and it, it does like try and do stuff um you know that it is often indicated that something really weird is happening in an area be it good or bad um you can choose to have it as a good omen or a bad omen or neither it is entirely up to you um, but it's never known to be aggressive um, yeah that's what i'm thinking that's why i think there wouldn't i wouldn't push the luck <laughs> <laughs> yeah um okay as you like think about climbing up, um, you kind of do a, a precursory like climb and just like yeah, decide that it's just not worth. Like it's a little bit unstable. You're worried about maybe falling through the ro- uh, roof itself, and you just come down. And Salatus Grace kind of stops and curls up very, very close to you until the plant is very, very, very close, and then it does something that you've never seen before. You see the leaves pop open until you can see that very, very centre of the plant, what looks like half a sphere that has lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of little holes in it. And it starts to make noise. And every time that kind of bassy noise comes in, you can see this kind of half sphere kind of like vibrate and shift and point out and come back in again. For those of us in the real world, this looks a lot like a speaker. (laughs) Oh, I was and thinking of a, the... of a co- colander. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, but very close. Um, and you hear noise come out. And you hear, Are we sure they're even coming here? I can't feel my feet, man. If the plant says they sent Asta this way, then they'll be here. You could get your first A-pop or reconsidering your life choices. The fuck is an A-pop? It's apoptosis. It's programmed cell death, ridding the body of parts that aren't needed anymore. It's what the sickles call it anyway. Helps. Helps to cope? Nah, to understand why we're doing what we're doing. Oh, fuck, he's here. That's Aster, right? If you trust that you planted the root, then it's time. (sighs) Nazir, I call upon... You hear nothing but static. And then suddenly it cuts back. So what's next? It's just one more in Diablera, and then the abage of light can begin. And then the petals close around the speaker, and you suddenly see that the whole limb that came out to reach you 
slowly begins to turn brown and black and disappear into like this fine dust. Could I have you make a sanity roll, please? Don't stare straight at the anomalies. Uh. That's a success. <laughs> a success. Uh, then yes. you only take one point of sanity damage. <laughs> uh, um, d- d- Lark isn't sure what, what exactly that was, but they heard the name of Aster. And uh, so they're going to look into the, like, look around at like to the to the gate is the, like is the entire vine completely gone like disintegrated yeah like you kind of look you can't see where it originally came from you just noticed that it was coming through the gate but yeah mm-hmm. there's this kind of like fine black powder that is beginning to be like blown away in the cold wind yeah uh so um lark is going to take their sickle and uh look into the hut and uh tell the the woman inside um i'm i need to go inside she nods, um, like she's trying to save her energy, but she nods. Yeah, and I um, think Lark is going to close the door and go inside uh, as quietly as they can and try to sneak after the people. <laughs> no, well, not sneak, but... <laughs> they don't know what... say, that requires a death check, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just just uh, be quiet and make sure that that uh, they their their own noises don't overshadow the noises of the people that are in front of them, so they can find them in case this is uh, splitting up or whatever. They don't know what they're expecting on the um, to look like. Yeah, I'll, I'll still make you make a stealth check. Okay. Um, like it's just the difference between like how well you've managed to hide your sounds so that you don't alert and can still hear, um, versus to them just absolutely not knowing here. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety. That's a fail. God damn it! I'm trying to help y'all get like improvement roles that aren't ethel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh. Absolutely. Um, you managed to make your way down there. It's not quite as stealthy as you'd want it to be, but you can definitely still hear like the four of them ahead. Um, you can like basically see um, like as you kind of like creep up, um, you definitely like see Asta like turn around to look at you, sees that you're coming and there's like returns his attention to um, what's happening in front of him. Um, so yeah, the Five of you um, are very, very close to this like big open area where, yeah, there's a giant metal door off to the left, um, which seems to be open and ajar. Um, You can see there is a giant metal door in front of you, which is still closed and the same to the one to the right. Um, You can see in this area that there is evidence of very, 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 very dead um, like plant devourer creatures um, that have obviously like some of them leaning out of vents, some of them are just laying dead on the floor. can y'all take a listen check for me, please? Ooh, a success. Woohoo! <laughs> you can mark an improvement. <laughs> so the young un amongst us manages to uh, pass their listen check. How about the uh, the two slightly older ones? Nah. <laughs> My ears are full of grunt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you wrote the exact same thing with the, against the exact, exact same uh, threshold. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you you two don't hear shit. We're just so Um, in sync. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But that's okay. Uh, Lark, like, as you're headed down and you're kind of, like, trying to listen to intently, like, what's going ahead of you so you know where they are, and you manage to catch them fairly quickly anyway, um, you listen... Sorry. God, our stupid old people ears, (laughs) Azor. Back in my day, I could hear. Um, What? (laughs) <laughs> the man who just blasted a shotgun <laughs> indoors <laughs> can't hear anything. I guess yeah, you two can you two can like blame that. For reference, I'm still I'm still a little bit away, right? I'm not already. Yeah, you're not right behind yeah, them. Okay. Like at least Asta knows that you're here, yeah. even if the others don't. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you hear like kind of like this shuffling moving sounds like what kind of success is it just the normal success you got uh, yeah yeah you hear the sound of like something big like moving um kind of like scraping or like sliding across like metal um or floor um you hear the sound of what looks what sounds like 
kind of like scraping, screeching noises as if someone has like pushed a table and it hasn't gotten like proper protection on the floor and it does like noise. Um, you hear a little bit of that. It's a little distance off, um, but it feels like it's directly ahead of you. And this was behind a door, right? You said there was another door? Yep. Um, uh, Lark is going to uh, hurriedly run up to the group and um, they're going to poke uh, Sully um, and they're going to signal them if they can talk in, like for a second off off to the side. Uh, yeah, uh, Sully looks at you uh, like a hint of surprise. Like, it, it's not like a what, but it's just like a <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Like a, a, a small scrunch of the eyebrows. And yeah. then he like just kind of leans in uh, and uh, like... Yeah, off to the side. And then yeah. um, Lark is going to say, I I saw one of the purple plants outside and it... it, it, it uh, I don't know what... It made that sound that, you know, those little uh, machines make that the little... Whatever. The, it made a sound and it sounded like... I heard voices on it and the voices were talking that Aster was leading people here and it was a plan that he was planning to bring them here I think something is wrong a plant told you this yeah one of the purple ones the ones that are harmless oh Salata's grace yeah well I think this is, I think this is a, 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 um, a trap. And like the, they're trying to repeat as best as they can what they heard, because <laughs> I do not have it verbatim. We're going to go on the assumption, and we're going to put this out now, mm -hmm. that if you hear recordings from Salata's Grace, mm -hmm. that you are able to repeat them perfectly. <laughs> it might <Verbatim>. be magic. <laughs> verbatim, every goddamn word. It might be magic. It might be that you all have extremely good memories. Or it might be that this is how we're going to cope with sharing information. Thank you. This is you. how we're going to cope. You're welcome. I appreciate it. So Bye. in world, you all have fantastic memories when it comes to Zalata Grace recordings. It sounds to me like somebody was trying to ambush Aster. If I'm understanding correctly. You think? It, it might even be, it says the plan. Says. <laughs> I said with my words. Lark said. <laughs> you said. Uh, <laughs> and th th there were voices. Uh, not that there were. I just heard, before I came here, there were noises behind that door. There's definitely something behind it, like chairs being moved backwards. I'm gonna say that Asta and um, S Saluna. Now that um, that the pair of them have gone to that like open door um, and kind of like as you two are talking, uh, Saluna just kind of like turns to Ralph and says, uh, "Maybe you guys want to try and check out some of the other doors. Let's we'll clear this out as soon as we can. And once you, yeah, whatever." Um, and the pair of them kind of like begin to make their way to try and like open this door a bit wider and like go and search uh, what's inside that part. Quick, Neil, the NPCs are distracted. Get in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and uh, Lark is go uh, going to repeat the same thing to mm. uh, Ralph as well. Or maybe he joined earlier. Who knows? Maybe we yeah, said maybe. this before we had our conversation. Yeah. Okay, so you're thinking something strange is going on with Aster then? I think so. I couldn't see him when we first showed up. I, I just, I couldn't tell something was really weird about it. You couldn't see him? Was he around the corner? Just couldn't focus on him. Couldn't see him, even. I, hard to explain. Too fast? It didn't seem right. He did say that he used to practice magic. Could be that he was doing something, but I don't know why that would affect you, but not the rest of us. All right, well, let's just be really careful, eh? I don't... I don't know who to trust. Uh, 
This seems weird, so... V, quick question. Yeah. What Lark described from uh, Slada's Grace talking to it, has Lark ever experienced this? Lark. Uh, Sully. No. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. Has Sully ever experienced Are you asking this? for me? <laughs> no. Uh, Sully would never have experienced this before. Would he have heard of other people experiencing this? I'm going to say yeah, um, but it's more kind of like rumors like you know a person who says they know a person that this happened to like it's only like one degree of separation away it's not like kevin bacon levels away but like you know someone who says that they know someone for sure um yeah you've heard of it but never seen it and i'm assuming the rumors are basically like yeah when solaris grace talks to you it's like it's whispering truths kind of thing like yeah yeah even if they're unfun truths it's usually like like Whatever it was saying is usually kind of factual. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to establish if right. Sully... I, I I am going to say that that is what you can believe. Yeah. I will neither confirm 100% if that is true. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, uh, just I'm trying to figure out where Sully stands on the whispers from Salada's Grace. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, Sully's not a fan of magic, so like... The it's all propaganda. To people. Yeah, yeah. Birds <laughs> aren't real. Fake newts. <laughs> They're making humans turn against each other. Um. <laughs> the whole sprouting is a cover-up because they're changing the batteries in the birds. <laughs> have you seen any birds recently? <laughs> <laughs> they always seem to have apples since stamped on their ass. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out like what Sully stands on Solaris Grace is. Oh. Oh, fuck me. I have to kind of make a decision here. And one of them, meta-wise, I know is a very beneficial decision. <laughs> Maybe make like a history thingy or whatever, if you've ever interacted with Slatha's uh, Fuse check. No, like he would have, like, again, like the same as basically everyone else. Like what exp- what uh, Lark just experienced is not something that many other people have experienced at all. And it's definitely nothing that um, Sully would have experienced. Yeah, then I think uh, Sully is going to say something along the lines of, I've heard of Salada's Grace mm, whispering to people, talking to people before. And people tell me that it tells you the truth. But it is a plot. And it is part of the whole weird world. So let's not put too much stock in it. But if we were to give it the benefit of the doubt, it sounds to me like what is ever is going on here is to do with Aster. Or this thing you heard was way back in the day and Aster isn't Aster anymore. He just says he is. Here's where my uh here's where my stance on this whole thing is. I have heard there's books down here that are very, I wouldn't say valuable, but, you know, important, right? Mm -hmm. They catalog information. I'm not saying that I want this book. Whoever can have it can have it. But if it's important, I, I just think we should focus on getting whatever's in here that's important away from whoever may or may not be, uh, Named by plants at us, you know. Fair. Can I have the three of you please make a spot hidden check? That's a fail. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Oh, Neil. <laughs> oh, that's rough, buddy. <laughs> nine, Man, Luck if nine coming in good. strong once again. <laughs> um, Sully and Ralph, as you're kind of like really getting into this conversation, um, you fail to notice, um, but Lark does, that it appears as if Asta has been standing at the door for a while listening to you guys. <laughs> Lark's going to look over over to Aster and um, 
like I guess in the middle of the conversation that they're doing this thing where they're like, oh, I'm being overheard. Mm. <laughs> wait, 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 just stop talking. Speak of the devil. And like you right. <laughs> does like intensive eye contact with a person until the others like turn around to notice it. Uh, speaking of the foul plants. Uh... Yep. <laughs> Unless he has some kind of issue with us cataloging the information. Um, uh, yeah, I think Sol is looking over at Aster at this point. I like the idea that like Ralph has his back to him and doesn't understand what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> he's behind. Oh no, that he, he says that after he notices. <laughs> yeah, he says yeah. that to Aster. Like, yeah. oh yeah, good yeah. point. Good point. Unless oh nice. He notices. You know, he's saying that to the person he's talking about at this point. Like, unless he notices, yeah. or unless he doesn't. What did, whatever, whatever I said. Whatever I said. Unless he doesn't want us. <laughs> unless he doesn't. Unless he doesn't we have unless a problem with us cataloging. Us cataloging that information. Yeah, um, Aster takes a few steps forward, and he he definitely still has his rifle in hand. Um, he hasn't like become untense, um, and he 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 definitely takes a few steps towards you all. Um, he doesn't seem to be raising his gun. For those of you who are astutely aware of how guns work, he still has the safety on. Um, you can see um, Saluna, who is like rapidly like gathering things together that seem to be important to her um and like you see weird little trinkets you see like an old horseshoe um you see like what looks like a, a small bracelet with a little bell on it like you see lots of weird little things going in here um so she's kind of like busy packing what she thinks are like essential weird things from this place um but Aster like takes a few steps forward and he says so salata's grace mentioned me Lark is not going to say anything. <laughs> Are you surprised by that? He looks down and shakes his head. Looks back up. No. Who told you about this place? She tells me she's a scout for places like this. If she could tell there was something weird about me, she had an awful lot of trouble seeing me to start with. I put it down to the way in this situation, you know. What did Delata's Grace say about me? It said you were being set up. He, like, closes his eyes and just mouths the word, fuck. <laughs> did a woman really tell you to come here? He nods. Fuck. I've got a friend. It's based in Diablera. We escaped from this cult when we were younger. There were weird things that had been haunting and following us for a real long time. What did the plant say? They're coming after you. And... Name... God damn it. You seemed to be the trigger to... Whatever they were. They did something. But they were waiting for you. That's about all we know. And then they were going to go after Diablera. Diableria. After my friend. Do you think this whole situation is because they were trying to ambush you? Yeah. Then let's get everything out of here as soon as we can, so no more people have to get hurt. And you can go into details when we're done. Because right. whatever killed those people out there is probably still in here. Right, but I'm not leaving until we find that book, though. Help me open this. And he, like, puts the gun on his back, he rushes over and he, like, tries to open the door that's, like, directly ahead of where you came in, um, where you heard the, the kind of chairs and everything being moved. Um, and, yeah, like, he kind of, like, smashes the button and it kind of, like... Whoo, 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 big flashy lights, lots of noise. Um, and the door kind of, like very loudly and slowly begins to open. Gun trained on the doorway. You train your gun on the doorway and Asta also like re uh, gets his gun ready so he takes it off of the um, off of safety very quickly. Um, you hear that uh, Saluna has kind of like rushed in like both machetes ready to go just kind of like what the hell are you doing? Um and you see before you what looks like a very large containment room. You can see that there is uh, 
um, kind of like tables directly ahead of you and there looks like to be like light shades and, and like little lamps that are on them. You can see there are books and you can see that there are papers and writing implements and you can see that directly ahead of you there seems to be like this large cage area that has uh, the door that has been opened to it and there are stacks and stacks of shelves that go all the way back so far that you can't see and there's a couple of blinking lights that are coming on. You can see that there are these boxes and weird items but the thing that really quickly draws your attention is that almost directly ahead of you there is this small like lectern and on top of this lectern there is this small green very very old looking book and you can see that there is some words written on the front um could i have um sully and ralph roll a language own please um in this situation luck i'm sorry um (laughs) written language is not (laughs) <laughs> um, okay, how did we do, Japs? Oh, boy. I got a 90 on the 76, so that's a fail. I did nicely. I rolled a 69. Nice. <laughs> oh, nice. nice. Uh, alas, uh, still so a fail. Nice. You failed nice number, nicely. but alas. Um, you can tell that there is, like, something written on the front in a very, very old, like, cursive handwriting, um, but you don't really get enough time to absorb it. And the reason you don't have time to absorb it is because you notice that kind of just behind it that you can see that there are some of the shelves that have been pushed and slid around. It's as if someone has been walking in here in the dark, just accidentally pushing and knocking things over. And what you see before you, about 20 foot in height, is a creature that is kind of made from this grey root-looking thing. Its arms and legs are both the thicknesses of tree trunks. Its head is huge and has like this very reflective mirror-looking face. And as the lights come on and the door opens, this creature has its arms on top of two of these stacks and lifts itself up so it's standing more upright and its entire head only turns around to look at everyone on the other side. Hey guys, Cassie here, voice of Lark. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Sprouting. Things are really starting to go places, huh? If you enjoyed what you heard so far, first of all, stay so, so, so tuned for more because, oh boy, the things that are about to come. Uh, And please, if you know someone who's into plants and horror and maybe a combination like horror plants or plant horror, be sure to let them know to check out The Sprouting. We are still a very small and budding podcast and word of mouth is really the best way to plant a seed in other people's ears and brains early. (laughs) See what I did there? (laughs) Yeah, we have puns too, sometimes, if Volanda lets us, if we're not too busy running from plant monsters and stuff, you know. Anyway, we have a bunch of patron names that we made use of. So if you don't know what that means, we have a patron and all members of our patron can add names to our Not A Pete fund. So we can name characters and places and stuff like that in our world building. So we made a lot of use of those in The Sprouting. In this episode, we made use of the name Seluna, which we got from Chaos Brain Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. And from other parts of world building that might not have been mentioned in this episode yet, we have Corentus, which was given to us by Keely underscore Lionheart. We have Lillian and May. Those names were given to us by Kirana X. We have the name Roland, which was given to us by Crank. And then we have a bunch of names from Library Cat. The names that we used were Athalia, Weston, Hollow's Crest, Basil Bass Abenwood, Aliza, Eldred, Restmere, and Valikdorn. And last but not least, we have the name Diableria, which was to given to us by Lily. So, thank you to all our lovely patrons for donating those names into our Not a Pete fund. And uh, keep them coming. <laughs> anyway, there might be an ad space here, or maybe not. But if there is, I'm giving it over to V and Aethor. Hear you on the next episode. Bye! It's V here. And Aethor. And we're back to talk to you about more Quest Portal. 
For $8 a month, you can subscribe to Quest Portal and get access to a bunch of like extra stuff. The first and most obvious one to kind of point out is the avatar creation. When you create a new character, you can click create avatar and they have an AI system that helps you create a character. It's very modular. You can just kind of click a bunch of buttons and you will get a character roughly in your idea or you can add a bunch of descriptions and get super specific to get the stuff you want. You can then attach that to your character sheets and as a GM, you can attach that to as many character sheets as you want. The other big feature of Quest Portal Pro is the assistant. The assistant has like a lot of cool features. When you create a campaign, you can set the campaign to a specific system that you want and the assistant will work with that system. So if you have a Blaze in the Dark game and you have a Call of Cthulhu game, if you're in your Blaze in the Dark and you ask it a question, it will pull information from the Blaze in the Dark SRD instead of pulling it from the Call of Cthulhu one. (laughs) If you have a a further subscription to the Chaosium Core, which includes all of the books that they have for helping you to create campaigns, if you have that, it links up with your assistant and that will pull from also the additional books. Mostly we end up using it for rule checks because, yeah, like Aether and I have played Call of Cthulhu before, but we don't know all the rules and it doesn't necessarily apply for what we're doing right now. So it's really nice just to have that little like, oh, hey, can you check this rule for me? What does this mean? What are the rules on shotguns, for example? Like, it's just nice having it around at the time. It's actually kind of wild how much it can kind of pull from and how clever it can get with some of the stuff because you can ask it for like a list of items that it will list out the items it has in the information and then you tell it to like generate extra stuff because you're like, ah, no, 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 no. I I need a, a more specific kind of item. I also use it to help generate NPC stat blocks because I am quite a tourist <laughs> not having character sheets and this has saved me so much time that they actually have character sheets now because it's a really good shortcut for me to be a better GM. <laughs> it's also like it's a really good shorthand for somebody who like English is my second language and as such my vocabulary isn't always up to par. I love throwing in like ah, just reword this for me and it throws it back at me using like words that I don't usually use and I'm like I like being able to like kind of play around with it like that. You can get Quest Portal Pro with the Avatar Maker and the Assistant and links to the library and all of the cool things that you can ask it to help you with. You can get that for $8 a month. Um, you can find that on their website or you can find a link to it down below and you can also get a seven day free trial for all of these paid features you don't even need a code you don't even need to click anything specific for us you just go to the website sign up and you can sign up for the seven day free trial and then you can go on from there i think i've run the net we'll see you later bye bye